everyone, my name is Marissa. I am a certified personal trainer and I ate like Natasha Ocean for an entire week. I am so excited to share my thoughts and provide a little bit of nutrition education to show you what great healthy balanced meals can look like. I'm super new to this, so if you have any suggestions on things to include the next time I review a fitness influencer's what I eat in a day slash what I eat in a week, please let me know in the comments. I am always open for constructive criticism because as you've seen, my first fitness influencer workout review was not very good. So bear with me with my very first what I eat in a day slash week review video. $42, but this isn't even including the two times she eats out in the video. So I'll add that onto the total later. That's exactly what I predicted around $200 and it'll be worth it, I hope. Good morning. It is day one and on day one, she made these breakfast tacos, but it serves two and I don't feel like eating them by myself and I'm kind of in a rush this morning. So I'm gonna swap out what she had that day. I'm gonna leave that for the weekend when I can actually enjoy eating that with my boyfriend. <laughs> so this morning I'm just gonna have the vanilla and almond special K because it seemed like the closest thing I could find to the crunchy nut that she had in her original video. And I'm gonna pair it with some almond milk and raspberries and we'll chat about it. So I would say this is a pretty good breakfast. If you need something more for convenience and still want breakfast, it's a lot better than skipping breakfast. But I know just because of my routine that this won't fill me up long enough to hold me over until lunch. So I'll probably end up having a snack in the in-between time. Please note that in her video, it's all about intuitive eating. She is eating what and when it's right for her. So this is gonna be different for me. She even stated in the video that she's in a maintenance. So she's not trying to lose fat, she's not trying to build muscle. I would say I'm more in the muscle building category. Based on her physique, I'm assuming that her resting metabolic rate is slightly higher than mine, so I still think I might be in a surplus while doing this challenge. Either way though, all of the meals look super nutritious and I'm super excited to dive in. I like that she paired the cereal with raspberries so it wasn't just the cereal by itself, but overall it's lacking protein, especially for me because I'm using almond milk and not regular milk. So when I'm in a rush in the morning, I have a protein shake. So that fills me up and keeps me full until lunch. It's super fast. It's just as fast as making cereal. But yeah, it's nice to switch it up to be honest. All right, so I'm obviously not going for presentation value like she did in the video. This is also obviously a lot of food and I don't think I'm gonna be able to eat all of this. That is why I'm waiting for Joe to get home so he can help me. This is what I view as a balanced meal, meaning we have a protein source, which is the chicken, a vegetable source, which is the zucchini, and a complex carb, the couscous, which I haven't had in years and I'm honestly very happy that she included this in the video. They used honey on the zucchini, so I just wanted to try that. I have never tried that before, so I want to know if it's actually good. Oh my god. I am pleasantly surprised. I really like this dish because everyone loves pasta. I'm not really a huge pasta fan, but it is nice to switch things up every once in a while, but she emphasized protein. So we have the shrimp, so it's not like we're just filling up on carbohydrates. And I made the decision to go ahead and get plant-based pasta. So I did get an extra boost for the pasta itself as well. Overall, again, a really balanced meal. And now I need to try it because I need to know if I did a good job or not. 
It was easy to make, so I actually did it right. So prep time, about five minutes. That's why I was able to do this one this morning. Still always in a rush. I like when I don't have to cook something. I can just throw a bunch of things together. This is perfect. It is going to be so filling. I can already tell, like, it's pretty heavy. I got fat-free plain yogurt. I didn't mean to. I got it by accident, but it's okay because we get some of the healthy fats in the almond butter on top anyways. I like that she included raspberries. So she definitely does put an emphasis on fruits and veggies in all of her meals. Overall, this is protein packed. We got the healthy carbohydrates and the healthy fats. So this is also a well-balanced meal, even though it can just fit inside this jar. If you're looking for a really convenient breakfast that is also going to satiate you, I would definitely go with this choice. It maybe takes like three more minutes longer than it would for you to make cereal, but you're getting so much more out of it. I just now decided that I should probably start rating the meals, kind of like what I do with the workouts, but on a different scale. We'll do taste, satisfaction, and value. So taste, really self-explanatory whether I like it or not, that one's gonna be totally subjective. Satisfaction is gonna be whether or not it fills me up and keeps me full. And value, we're gonna look at the nutritional value. So is it balanced? Is it nutrient dense? Is it protein dense? Things like that. So for this one, I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10 across the board. I love it and I know it's gonna fill me up and keep me full probably until lunch because this is a lot of stuff. Oh my God, I'm far from math. I'm very excited not so much for the chicken but definitely for the salad I have never had a Lebanese dish before so I'm very excited to try that I like that it's not just a salad she included a high quality protein in there as well that is so so important you guys don't just try and fill up on carbohydrates because you're really not gonna get full from just that and it's not gonna hold you over very long salads are amazing they are so nutrient dense meaning they're low calorie but packed with important vitamins and minerals but you also need to pair it with the protein so our carb source is the salad, our protein source is the chicken, and we get the healthy fats from the salad dressing because it called for extra virgin olive oil. Now I'm gonna try it. I already know what the chicken tastes like, but I wanna try the salad. It's just so strong. I've never made a salad with just parsley before. Usually romaine lettuce is the main component. Good thing I like parsley. If you don't like parsley, this is definitely not the dish for you, but overall, taste I'm gonna go with an 8 out of 10 for satisfaction I'm gonna go with a 10 because of the protein and value I'm gonna say a 10 out of 10 as well it's very balanced and it uses a lot of high quality ingredients all right it is now 10 p.m. I am surprisingly very energized tonight I really do attribute that to the prior meals and despite my fast metabolism, I didn't really need to snack that much throughout the day just because what I was eating was so filling. Like, I actually had to put the parfait away. I could not finish it for breakfast, and I came back to it after lunch kind of as like something sweet to have because I have a major sweet tooth. For this meal, I really like it. She said to choose whatever protein that you wanted to add to the dish. She did a plant-based steak, and I'm just doing a real normal steak. The potato salad, I have never made something like this before and I also don't know how to cook. I think it turned out fairly well. For taste, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 despite my potatoes being slightly undercooked because again, I don't know how to cook. Satisfaction, I already know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is gonna fill me up and keep me full. Um, just based off of the lean protein. Potatoes are just very starchy and filling in general. So I'm gonna give that a 10 out of 10. And then for value, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10 only because there isn't really an emphasis on veggies in this meal. However, based on the veggies in the lunch, I know that that's not even a big deal. I'm just talking about this meal in particular. If we weren't going to look at the whole day. This looks like just so visually appealing and it looks like such a great breakfast. I really like this recipe because it yields so many granola bars. Like I have two that I'm gonna eat today, but I have basically enough for an entire week now. And I like that she paired it with fruit, so we're getting our phytonutrients in. And 
I think it's really more so up to you to get the protein in. Yes, we are covered on the carbohydrates, but when it comes to the healthy fats, you'll find that in the nut butter. I used almond butter because I hate peanut butter. <laughs> and then if you use any nuts, that'll also account for the fats in the dish as well. For me, what I used as the primary source of protein was straight protein powder and chia seeds. Because I wanted to have something in there that would allow this meal to keep me full until lunch or at least until I have a little snack. When I have something that's too high in carbohydrates and really lacks the other two macronutrients, I find myself hungry even just an hour or two hours after my meal. So I do want to have something in the morning that's going to keep me full. Because I don't want to get hungry during class. Because then I'm just going to start focusing on how hungry I am and not on the actual lecture. I recommend using more than one cup of mix-ins because I didn't and they're still like kind of wet. I put them in the fridge. In the video, she did not put them in the fridge, but I knew that mine needed it. So they aren't completely hardened and that'll make it a little bit easier. Like it's flimsy. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10 for taste because whenever I add protein powder to something like this, you can always taste the protein powder. It's a little gritty, but not bad enough to make it not taste good. And then for satisfaction, I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10 as well. I know that it's gonna fill me up just based off of the ingredients in the granola bar. If I just had fruit for breakfast, that would be a lot lower on the scale because that's not really gonna do anything for me. And then for value, I'll give it a 10 out of 10 as well. This is a very nutrient dense breakfast and I'm excited to eat it. So um, the fish cakes completely fell apart. So not the best dish we've made so far. Definitely interesting. First, let's just talk about the macronutrient content. Definitely a good source of protein within the tuna and the eggs, so that's great. We got our healthy carbohydrates from the onions and the breadcrumbs. I cooked with olive oil, so that accounts for the healthy fats. So it's still a balanced meal, even though it doesn't look like one. Now I'm gonna try it and give you my taste rating. Well, it tastes better than it looks. I'm still gonna give it like a seven out of 10. Um, not too much flavor, but she did pair it with a sauce, so that makes sense. And then for satisfaction, I'm gonna give it like a six. I know that I'm gonna need to pair this with something else in order for it to fill me up, but I may be underestimating it because it does have a lot of protein in it. So we'll just have to wait and see. For overall value, I'll still give it a nine out of 10 because I really do think just based off of the macronutrient profile, it is a healthy, well-balanced meal. I don't have any bagels, so I used whole grain toast instead. And I've actually never had avocado toast, mainly because I don't really like avocado. Like it's good in dishes, but I don't like it just by itself. Who does? Do people actually like avocado plain? Anyway, there's a lot of avocado on this plate, as you can see. So again, super well-balanced meal, something that I can tell will fill me up. We got our protein from the eggs, we got whole grains, and we got our healthy fats from the avocado itself. So now I need to try it, and I'm kind of scared because that is a lot of avocado. Oh my god, I can't even pick it up. Okay, I'm going in. Why is that so good together? Oh my gosh, no wonder people eat this. Taste 10 out of 10, however, I do think I need to add a little bit more seasoning to it, but that's my fault. Definitely recommend this too, because it took me like 10 minutes to make, and that's super great for getting a nutritious breakfast in without much time and effort. Satisfaction, I'm probably gonna say a 10 out of 10 as well, because this is just a lot of food for breakfast. And then value, again, a 10 out of 10 all across the board. I love discovering new healthy breakfast options. I feel like a lot of people just get stuck in the habit of eating cereal for breakfast or just skipping breakfast because they don't have time. So I really, really appreciate this one. So yeah, I'm gonna confirm that the satisfaction was a 10 out of 10 because I can't finish it. I tried, but it's so much food 
for uh, nine in the morning. <laughs> so that's the one downside. If you get nauseous or if you have to wake up super, super early, this may not be the breakfast for you. You may want to do that more as like a midpoint between breakfast and lunch or just for lunch. Cause oh my gosh, that is filling. <laughs> So this is gonna be the second avocado I have eaten today. I really like this dish. It's just not completely balanced. It's very high carb and high fat, but we don't really have much of a protein source. So if I make this in the future, I am going to add a protein source to it, like probably chicken, something easy, or shrimp. I think shrimp would be good in this dish. For taste, I'm gonna give it a seven because I think I overdid it with the garlic. I followed the recipe, but I also would like to mention, I really like that Natasha altered the recipe to make it a little bit healthier because yes, olive oil is a healthy fat, but we have plenty of it on top of the avocado. So it would just be too much and it's kind of overkill. And then for satisfaction, I'm gonna give this a six out of 10. I don't really think that it's going to keep me full. It might fill me up in the moment. I'll probably be hungry again in a couple of hours. And then for value, I will give this one a seven as well. I think everything about it is great. It just needs that protein. Don't particularly recommend this dish if you need to get out of the house very quickly. This is why I made this on a weekend, and I think I'm going to enjoy it, but we have to taste test to find out. That's insanely good. Oh my gosh. We're getting our protein sources from mainly the eggs and then a little bit from the cheese and sour cream. And then we get the carbohydrates from the tortillas and healthy fats, of course, from the avocado once again. If you have a weekend where you can make these, 100% recommend that you do. They are amazing. And typically when I have extra time to make breakfast, I'll make protein pancakes or something on the sweeter side. This is a nice change because normally breakfast foods are very high carb and very sweet. So I'm really glad that she included this in her week. For taste, I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10. It was amazing. For satisfaction, I'm also gonna give it a 10 out of 10 because I know these will fill me up and hold me over for a while. It's basically like a lunch, but the eggs make it seem more like a breakfast food. So that's pretty cool. For value, I'm also gonna give it a 10 out of 10 just because of the variety of ingredients and that it's super well balanced. <laughs> So my camera isn't recording properly, so I'm doing this on my phone. As you can see, this is a lot of food. The great thing about nutrient-dense meals is you can have a lot of food for way less calories. So that's why it helps a lot with weight loss, which is great. That's why salads are always a good go-to. For taste, I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10. For satisfaction, I'll give it an eight, just because while there is a lot of protein in the shrimp, I don't know if that's gonna be enough, just because typically salads don't hold me over very long so I would have paired it with something else um, not just having a salad alone value I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 we've got our carbohydrates from the vegetables our protein from the shrimp and the healthy fats from the dressing yo, yo. So this has got to be my favorite dish of the week. I am notorious for buying poke bowls out and now I finally know how to make them on my own. It did take quite a while. This was definitely the longest recipe. It's more of like a treat for me. When I do my 80-20 rule, meaning I eat clean 80% of the time and the other 20 doesn't really matter, I usually involve the poke bowls in the 20% only because I get it out and I am not in control of what they really put in it as far as the quality of the ingredients and just the fact that this kind of dish has a lot of added sugars but it is so delicious I cannot wait to eat it for taste I'm gonna go with a 10 out of 10 again my favorite I'm never gonna stop eating these for satisfaction also a 10 out of 10 with the salmon paired with the brown rice, it is just gonna be such a filling meal. And then for value, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. While it is super balanced, we've got our protein from our salmon, our carbs from our brown rice, and 
I like this because I did get to choose brown rice instead of white rice. And then we have all of the oils that we used as our healthy fats. So it is a perfectly balanced meal. The only reason it's not a 10 out of 10 is because of the excess of added sugars, but it's not so much to the point where it's unhealthy at all. It just adds to the flavor and this dish wouldn't be the same without it. So I will never omit the added sugars. It's just when it comes to value and we're totaling all of that up, it gets knocked down a point. Overall, definitely a special dish that you can make on a weekend night instead of getting takeout. If you know how to make this, there's no reason you need to be getting takeout except for convenience, which I understand. Okay, I've been very excited to have this. I've been looking forward to it all week because I've never made chia pudding before and I kind of like it. I think it needs to be a little bit sweeter, but I think that's why the mango slash pineapple and the blueberries are there for that added sweetness without you having to add to it. It's incredibly balanced. We got, of course, the carbohydrates from our fruit, which is a really great healthy source and you should not be afraid of them. We get some fat from the coconut milk and the protein from the chia seeds, which chia seeds are a very protein dense food. That's why I add a couple tablespoons to my shakes when I make them. So even though I'm having a protein shake, I like to add a little bit more. Really great breakfast, quick to make. The only thing that takes a while is you soaking the chia seeds in coconut milk. But you could literally go do that, set it aside, and then go do something else while it's waiting. For taste, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. For satisfaction, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. And for value, I will give it a 10 out of 10 as well. So this is overall just a great lunch to have when you are in a rush. This took me two minutes to make. A really low maintenance dish, but also very filling and very nutritious. Normally when I am in a rush, I have a sandwich. I mean, it's a little bit more creative that she put it on a bagel. And I know that she probably used a whole wheat bagel instead of the white one that I have here. So I'm gonna go off of the nutrient density of hers versus mine. I like that she chose chicken instead of ham. I think for taste, I could just say a 10 out of 10. Again, I feel like these are all going to be 10 out of 10. They're just so good, especially for healthy meals. People have the stigma that it's not going to taste that good. Throw that idea away and do what I am doing in this video. You will not regret it. For satisfaction, I'll give this a 10 out of 10 as well. The lean protein from the chicken is going to be very filling and it's also going to keep me full later. For value, I will give it a 10 out of 10 as well. We have the protein from the chicken, the carbohydrates from the bagel and the lettuce, and some healthy fats in the mayo. So I hate eggplant. So I decided to go with the zucchini and honey like we did previously because it was so good. I just had to have it again. I like this meal. It is definitely healthy. It's just not as balanced as some of the other meals we've seen. When I say it's not as balanced, on a scale of one to 10 for it being balanced, I would give it like a nine out of 10. It's just that much off because we don't have a complex carbohydrate source. We have our protein in the fish. We also have our healthy fats in the fish and in the olive oil I used in the zucchini. And then we have our carbohydrates from the zucchini itself, but we don't have a complex carbohydrate in the form of maybe brown rice or quinoa. That being said, I think for satisfaction, I'm gonna have to give it a six out of 10. Because we don't have that additional complex carbohydrate, I don't see this filling me up. Like you can eat a million vegetables and not be full. That's an exaggeration, but you get the point. Complex carbohydrates have a lot of fiber and starch. So that really plays into how satiating they are. And it's a great addition to a meal. For taste, 10 out of 10. And for value, I'll give it a nine out of 10, just because of what I just said. trying all sorts of new things. I've never made ramen at home. I've never made tofu at home. And I'm excited to try them both at once. I have had this type of ramen out and I'm kind of nervous to see how it compares, but I cut the tofu in huge slices. So it's not bad. 
The only time I have tofu is those tiny, tiny cubes in miso soup. So it is definitely different, but I like that we have a lot of protein in this dish. We have a lot from the tofu and from the eggs. And we got our main carb source via the ramen. And then we got some veggies sprinkled in here and there. I didn't really use too much just because I ran out, but I used what I had and I think it worked out pretty well. For taste, I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10. It's super flavorful. And in Natasha's video, she said she cut a lot of corners and didn't follow the recipe exactly. So I'm like, Psh. if she's gonna cut corners, I'm gonna cut corners. So I basically went off of what she made in the video, except I didn't have seaweed and I didn't have mushrooms and I don't really like mushrooms. So I wasn't gonna use them anyway. I think this was pretty closely resembled. The only thing I would say that's bad about this dish would be the high sodium content. It's okay every now and then, and you do need sodium, but typically Americans tend to get a lot of excess sodium as it is. So for someone who already has a high sodium diet, this may not be the best. For satisfaction, a 10 out of 10 as well. This will definitely fill me up. And for value, I'll give it a nine out of 10 just because of the sodium content, but really, Overall, it is a well-balanced meal and super filling, so yeah. So just to recap, that was her full week of eating. I had to have some tweaks here and there just because of my personal schedule and my personal preferences for food, but overall, it was so fun to do that. I feel like I ate so well that week, and I'm talking more so about the quantity of food that I ate. I feel like I definitely was around my maintenance calories and maybe even in a good surplus, which is good for my goals. She talked about in the video how she was just maintaining, didn't necessarily try to lose weight or gain weight. This was just food that she loved and made her happy. And it just was so refreshing to do something other than my normal routine. So if you want to do this for yourself, I would highly recommend it. If your budget allows, of course. And that was a lot of money spent on groceries. But just as a note, I did make all of those meals for two and most of the ingredients I had to buy, I didn't just have in my apartment because it's not the things I typically eat. So if the foods included in her video are things that you normally eat and you're only preparing meals just for yourself, it is highly likely that it will not cost as much for you as it did for me. Now, how did I feel that week? Energy wise and functioning wise, I felt really amazing. My energy was high. I'm so used to having protein shakes every day. It was weird not having that as a part of my routine. I was worried that my energy wasn't gonna be super high, but honestly, it really was because I was nourishing my body correctly. I am very pleased with that experience. So overall, for the entire week, I'm gonna give that a 10 out of 10. We're starting off this series strong and I hope I can keep it up. So comment below other fitness influencers you'd like me to eat like for a week. I am very excited to continue this series. Again, let me know how I can improve. I am all ears. If you really enjoy this type of video, please give it a thumbs up so I know and I can make more of these for you. And if you never want to miss a video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you're notified every time I post. With that, I hope you have a great rest of your day, your night, your weekend, and I will see you later.